on today's episode of Video Marketing Madness, how to create your own studio on a budget. And today's episode is made possible by freevideoeditor.co. Are you looking to start doing some video editing, but you don't want to spend the high-end video editor prices? Well, then head on over to freevideoeditor.co, download our free video editing program along with all the other goodies, and start editing like a pro today. Again, that's at freevideoeditor.co. Leave off the last M for manipulation. Manipulation, which is what we're trying to do here, manipulate you. That's what we do. All right, with that, let's hit the music. Here we go. He's Ray the Video Guy, yeah, Ray the Video Guy. His skill is where it's at, even if he's a little fat. He's filled with video expertise, and has so much knowledge that you need. His YouTube ninja tricks can make your marketing so sick. He's Ray the Video Guy, yeah, Ray the Video Guy. And it's the radio show about video, video marketing madness with Ray the Video Guy. I'm Steve Sleeper on the Earn Dot Show Radio Network, and of course we're Facebook Live. Yes, uh, we, we got a YouTube channel that we put these videos on. Uh, we've got a Facebook page and Twitter, and and you know and, iTunes and Plurk. Good old we, we've iTunes. Got, we've got Plurk too. Plurk <laughs> can't leave out Plurk, but yes, we have iTunes. In fact. We need your help. So head on over to iTunes, search up Video Marketing Madness, leave us a five-star rating, and uh, if you do, you will have good karma for the next week. That's, and a, that's a, a fact. A, and, and a free Plurk. A free Plurk account, yes. Just go to Plurk and sign it up afterwards. It'll be there well we worth it. All right, so with that, today we're going to talk about how to set up a home studio on a budget. And when we talk about a budget, you know... Uh, this could go a few different ways. Now, we're not going to go, well, we'll probably talk about how to do it on a very super constrained budget as well. But we're kind of talking about people that want to do this somewhat seriously. They just don't want to spend thousands of dollars getting a studio set up. So we're going to talk about how you can set up a home studio and just spend maybe a few hundred bucks um, setting things up. And, and we're going to talk about some tricks that will even help you to spend a lot less than that. Uh, to the point where you can even, you know, just spend a few dollars here and there to set up your own studio. And uh, the way I see it is there's a few things we need to uh, kind of put on this list of priorities for a home studio. One, of course, is going to be a camera. The other one's going to be a microphone. And the third one's going to be lights. Now, beyond that, we're also going to talk a little bit about how to stabilize the video. So you're going to need some sort of way to use a tripod or, or something similar to hold the uh, the camera still. And then, of course, you can add things into this, like backgrounds and green screens. You can kind of see the green screen behind me there. Oh, yeah, there it is. A little bit. Um, if, if, if you're watching. If you're, if watching, you're watching, yes. If you're listening, you can't see it. If you can see it, well, then uh, you got other issues. If well, if it. you're listening, it's green. Yes, if you're listening, it is green. Trust me. And uh, so those are the things we want to talk about. So there are the basics, and then there are some of the more advanced things you can add into it. But you can still do it on a very constrained budget without spending a fortune on these different things. And, of course, the first thing we want to talk about is video cameras because, obviously, in order to do a video, you need some sort of camera. Now, once again, I'm going to pop up my little phone here because guess what? This is probably one of the best cameras and cheapest cameras that you can get your hands on because you probably already have one in your pocket. And believe it or not, these cameras take better images than professional cameras did, you know, 10 years ago. Um, I had a, a $4,000 camera. It was SD and it was fantastic. And, you know, the image that you can get on, a, on this is going to blow that away because it's HD. It's got good color reproduction. It's got good uh, lighting reproduction. Now, of course, there are some caveats. You will need better lighting in order for your phone to do really well than, you know, maybe some of these nicer cameras are easier when it deals with lighting. But the fact that these cameras can take such high quality HD and even 4K video, absolutely astonishing. So that's what the first place you're probably going to want to start is to use the camera that you've already got in your pocket, which is your iPhone or your Android phone. Uh, you know, some of them obviously are better than others. 
But for the most part, if you've got a decent phone, you're probably going to have a really good camera in there, and it's very easy to use for uh, for doing a home studio. As a matter of fact, dirty little secret. I do work here in this office all the time. That's why the green screen is up behind me. And most of the time, I shoot with my phone. And I've got, you know, in this room, I've got uh, multiple really nice cameras. But the problem is... When I use, for instance, I've got some DSLRs, but I need another person. I need a person on the other end of there to make sure everything's set up. When I'm using my iPhone, it auto it auto focuses, it sets everything up for me, and I don't have to worry about these things. So it's actually easier for me and quicker to just use my phone. And then, of course, afterwards, once I use my phone, all I have to do is wirelessly transmit the video to my computer, and I'm ready to go. You know, with the DSLR, I've got to have somebody there to make sure everything's in focus. Then after I shoot, I've got to take out the card. I've got to put the card in the computer. I've got to download the videos. So it's a lot easier to just use my iPhone. And quite frankly, the quality is, as they say, good enough. Good I do. Enough. I use the iPhone for my green screen videos. I use them for my sales videos. Uh, I use them for, you know, whatever other types of little things I'm putting together. And, you know, if I'm doing anything high-end, I, I certainly bring out my nice cameras. If I'm working with a client, I'll bring nice cameras. But if I'm just shooting my own stuff... No need to go beyond using my iPhone. It works perfectly fine for that, and it should for you as well. But, of course, if you want to go beyond that, there are some great options out there. Uh, one one camera that I actually have, um, let's see, I think it's behind me here. That is right here. We've talked about this one before. This is the Mevo camera. Mm -hmm. And uh, while this is kind of known for doing live streaming, because you can go live stream directly to Facebook Live, and it's got built-in... Um, I don't want to say camera switching, but faux camera switching. So what this camera does is it shoots in 4K, so it shoots a giant image in 4K, and then using your iPhone, you can actually control what the camera focuses on. So you can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can cut. If you've got two people doing an interview, you can literally touch one person, and it'll cut to that person, touch the other person, it'll cut to that person, and because it shoots in 4K, you still get a 720 720p output. So you're still getting HD output directly to Facebook. Now, I also use this sometimes to shoot videos. So you don't have to use it just to go live. You can actually record vid video as well. And so I use it for that. And it's a great little camera. It works really well. Um, it connects with your phone, so you control it through your phone. But you also plug your microphone into your phone. So that's how you right. record audio. Now, it has a built-in microphone, but of course... A microphone from across the room is not going to sound great, but you can actually hook a lavalier up to your iPhone and then have that audio be recorded into the Mevo at the same time. So it's a very, very good camera for that. Some other That's options slick. right in front of me, the one I'm using right now, right here. See this one right here? Uh, that is a Logitech C920, and they actually have the C930 now. It's an HD camera with a nice uh, image to it. It's much better than the built-in cameras that come on, on your computers. So I highly recommend you do that as well. In fact, uh, one of the studio setups that I have in here is I actually put a, a, one of these Logitech C920s over here, and I put one over on the side. And then when I'm doing my videos live, I actually will switch back and forth. So I'll talk to this camera, then switch over, kind of like a newscaster would. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it adds a little bit of depth to the video. So those are a few options of course, you can get down to Best Buy. You can buy a mid-sized camera. You know, nowadays they're actually pretty cheap. Uh, you can get them anywhere from, you know, probably two hundred to uh, to five hundred bucks these days, and those are pretty nice. And of course, if you're going to be doing a lot of different things, a lot of versatile things, you may want to go with a bigger camera. If you want to do that, of course, Sony, Canon, uh, Panasonic, JVC, they all make very nice professional, mid-professional, um, you know, prosumer even as some people call them cameras and you can get those for you know from as little as 1500 up to you know well actually going up to about $30,000 most people are not going to go that high but that's the possibilities that are out there but honestly if you're getting started learn to use your iPhone or your Android phone as your camera you'll do quite well the videos will be perfectly fine and uh, you know it'll just be a it'll be a very good video that you make there so that's the first step is get yourself a camera decide what you're going to use now, if you're going to use a camera, you're probably going to need a tripod. Now, the great thing is, for most people, you don't need a high-end tripod. Now, I've got a tripod over here that uh, literally is older than any of my children. Um, yeah, in fact, it's no. probably about, 
gosh, it's got to be 25 years old now, and it's the one I use for everything. It's a very sturdy uh, uh, tripod. It's a very nice one, but it is about 25 years old now, and uh, you know, it works really well. But of course, if you're just doing an interview, you're just going to stand in front of a green screen, does it really matter if you have a, a $300 tripod, a $1,000 tripod, or a $12 tripod from Walmart? It, it doesn't make a difference. As long as it stays still, you can actually use anything. So I highly recommend... If you're on a budget, just go out and get a cheap tripod for now. Now, you're, if you're going to be doing things where you're going to be panning the camera left and right and tilting up and down, you don't want to go with one of these cheap options. You can do it with those, but they're going to be very shaky and, and they're not very stable. But if you're just putting that camera on, on the tripod, focusing on somebody standing in front of a green screen or focusing on somebody doing an interview... Those cheap tripods are perfectly fine. They do a great job. If you're going to start doing things where you're really going to be panning and tilting and all that, you want a fluid head tripod, and you can probably get one for, I think uh, B&H actually has uh, a couple of really nice brands. They're newer brands. I forget the name of them right now, but I think they have them starting around 200 bucks and going all the way up to you know a couple thousand dollars. But uh, you can get a really nice one for just a few hundred dollars, and it'll definitely be it'll be better than the ones you can get at Walmart and Best Buy. But if you need one to just lock down and get a stable image, go down to Best Buy and pick one up. You will need to get some sort of an adapter. Fortunately, they're everywhere now. I used to sell them all the time, but you can actually get them in Best Buy, and you know you can get them for ten bucks or something like that. Uh, we used to sell them for I think five bucks because we used to get them from China for fifty cents. You know, so. Uh, we could sell them nice and cheap, but um, you know they work really well. They just you snap your phone into it and you screw it onto the tripod, and, and there you go. You're ready to use it. So cool. it's uh, pretty nice. Now I I was telling Steve before we started here, I got one of these the other day, which is a uh, you know, oh yeah a mechanical uh, stabilizer stabilizer. Forget what they what's the word I'm looking for for now. your iPhone. It's got the gyroscope in there and everything that it's electric, and it works. You know. It, uh, we're still testing. It's a, it's kind of a beta project, but it's, uh, you know, it's not bad when it's calibrated, right? So, those are kind of fun as well. So that's good for handheld walking, and you don't want it to be, you know, jumping up and down. You can get something like that as well. Right. Um, now, the next thing we want to talk about is microphones. Microphones are perhaps the most important part of your video. You see, there have been dozens and dozens of tests done, and People will forgive bad video. They won't forgive bad audio. So if you were in a room where it was too dark to really see you very well, uh, but your audio was good, people will still watch. But if you're in a well-lit studio and your audio is terrible, they will turn it off. They don't. People don't like bad audio. So you definitely want to work on your microphone skills. And you know the ones that are built into these cameras, probably not the best to use. Now I have noticed, and some people have, have commented on this, that you know, if you're shooting with your own phone and you're this close or this close, you can probably get away with using the phone's microphone because you're not very far away from it at that point, so you can do that. But if you're going to be 5 feet away, 10 feet away, you want to be able to use a microphone that's actually going to pick up the audio right near you. The best thing to get is a lavalier microphone. Uh, we actually sell them. There's one by Rode, R-O-D-E. That makes it the smart love. They, um, we get the the ones that we get are uh, from a, a company called um, Movo, and they make great ones as well. And the ones that we sell actually will work on a regular camera. They'll also work on your uh, iPhone or iPad uh, or any smartphone. I, I shouldn't say iPhone; that confuses people. Any smartphone. So that's a great way to be able to do that. And you can pick one of those up. You can get them for uh, I think. Uh, most of them run around between fifty and seventy dollars for that. It's not a bad little microphone for that. And if no, you're uh, if you've got a video camera you're using and it's got a microphone input, you can actually purchase an Audio Technica lavalier microphone wired for probably you know twenty thirty bucks. So it's it's fairly inexpensive to do that. The one that you uh, sorry to interrupt. The one that you offer. What's that? Uh, what's that URL? Do you have it handy? Um, you know what? I I I, I did, but. We're actually redoing the site, so it may not be up right now. So let me let me see if it is or not. So I'm going to check it out, so that you guys get to s listen to me type in my computer here. Yeah, because that's a so. that's a slick little deal. It, uh, it you can plug in your iPhone, which by the way, you need an adapter to do that. So you can plug in your iPhone. No, nope, you don't need right? an, you don't need an adapter at all. 
No adapter. Oh, you don't. Necessary. Oh, I thought that's, you needed an adapter. No, that's that's the whole point of this particular one is that you don't. Oh need yeah, an yeah. No, that's what I was trying to say. And actually, you the know, website is the website adapter. is still up. It's a, it's at pocketvideopro.com. Pocket. So. And you don't need the adapter. Yeah, you don't need an yeah. adapter for that. You can if you have a regular lavalier. If you purchase a regular lavalier, you can buy an adapter. Uh, KV yeah. Technologies makes one. That's very good. But yeah, with this microphone, you do not need an adapter. It plugs right into your iPhone or your Android phone, and you're good to go. So it's very simple and easy to do. In fact, the, the new ones that we have, like I said, they work on either the uh, iPhone or they'll work on a uh, regular video camera because they, while the connections look the same, they're actually different, and that's why you need a special one for using on a, on a phone. But this one actually has a switch on it, and you can use it for either or both. And it comes with a nice long cord, and, and it's pretty good. And Rode, like I said, Rode makes one as well that's very good. So either one of those would be perfectly fine. So that's what you want to do there. Now, you can also get things like shotgun microphones, which is something that I've used in the past. Now, shotgun microphone is that long one that you see sometimes when you, when you watch a, a show where they show behind the scenes of a television, and you see the guy running around with a big, long pole and trying to point a microphone. That's a shotgun microphone or a boom as they call it, because the boom is actually the thing that he holds, but they'll call it a boom microphone. But those are great, too. In fact, um, my boom microphone is actually uh, a nicer sound than the lavaliers. It gives a much richer sound, I think, but it's, it's a pain in the neck to use to an extent, so you definitely want to check one of those out. If, if you've got the place to put it, it can be a very good microphone for you. But I will still say the lavalier is easier, quicker, and, uh, you know, nicer to do it obviously the the downside of the lavalier is you got to put it on your shirt and it, you can see it and you know with the boom microphone you don't see it which is nice so you can check those out so that's our microphones now if you're doing what we're doing here where we're talking directly into a webcam sitting at our desk there's a lot of great options in fact steve you just bought one you want to tell people what you just bought for the microphone yes Oh, it's the Audio Technica. It's a sixty-six dollar mic. Hold on, just a second. Let me get back to it. I'll, <laughs> I'll give you the. I can get. I can get to it very quickly. Yes. You. He, my, Ray was just seeing if I was paying attention. That's right. Me, I was so, testing. Yeah. Now there's, there's other to, great mics. While Steve looks that up, the uh, the Blue Yeti, the Blue Snowball are really good microphones for these types of things. Uh, the one that I have here is actually a professional radio microphone. It's the uh, Electro Voice RE20. That's going to be a little higher end, so you don't want to, um, you know, not everyone's going to want to jump on that one because it is a little more high end. It's pretty so. expensive. What I've got right now is a Blue Yeti. Uh, and yes. That's what I'm using, which is fine. The only thing I don't like I about right it is it's, it's not a directional mic. It's a, I think it's a great YouTube mic, though. And uh, if you're doing videos, you, uh, you, you can just set it on the on the table and it's going to pick you up and it's got like four patterns you can adjust for but it, it's it's not a true directional mic the audio technica atr 2100 is a usb cardioid uh, dynamic mic yes. uh, and 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 that's kind of the i, I do a lot of podcasts and so the, the the yeti's worked okay but it picks up a lot of background and so uh, i i got this one for 66 dollars on on b and h yeah. And uh, 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 it, it was supposed to be here today, but it got delayed because of the snowstorm. Nice. Well, the, and there's a lot of other options out there as well. Uh, Samson, one of my favorite mic companies, they make a, a small desktop mic that's really good for that kind of thing. I forget the name of that particular one, but it's a nice little microphone as well. Um, and there's a few of them out there that are like that. And uh, Audio Technica, who you mentioned, actually mm -hmm. makes everything from $60 desktop microphones all the way to professional radio microphones that can cost a thousand bucks so there's a lot of big options you can go for there so basically you just want to make sure that you've got good audio and there are a ton of options out there to help you to do that so go out there check them out get a microphone come on folks yeah 2017 it's easy to get a microphone amazon will deliver it tomorrow for you we well, want to make sure yeah. your audio is good. So it, go for it, that. Yeah, because the snowstorm's over. The nor'easter's over. So. Absolutely. All right, and so the next thing we want to talk about is lighting. Now, this is where things start to get really hard for people because there's so many different types of lights and how many lights do I need and, you know, what's the size of my room versus the number of lights. You definitely want to do something here. Now, one little trick, if you're really on a budget, um, if you've got 
a place where, you know, if you're in an office building with fluorescent lighting, and I know people complain about fluorescent lighting for this reason and that, but for video, especially, you know, non, it's not a high-end production here, a room with fluorescent lights, you know, an office building, can actually be very good. And the reason for that is those fluorescent bulbs, while they're, they're terrible light, they really are, they're not very good light. Um, if you were to go frame by frame on a video that's shot in a room with those, you'll actually see the person's skin tone change from slightly green to slightly red to slightly blue to slightly green. You know, you can actually see these if you go frame by frame. When you play it back, it's not very noticeable. But what it does is it provides you with a lot of light and it's very even. So you don't get a lot of harsh shadows. You know, you don't get the uh, the raccoon eyes and things like that when you use when you're in a room with those. You, you can see I kind of have it a little bit here. I get the raccoon eyes from from my lights up here, oh, but yeah. um, I got bag bags under my eyes, so I'll get rid of that. Well, it's uh, yeah, kind of well, yeah, it's a little bit, okay. but yeah. uh, it, it works really well. So if you can get into a room like that, you can actually get some pretty good lighting out of that. If you want to control it yourself, there's a lot of great options, and they're not very expensive. In fact, I, for this office here, because it is, it's not a you know, it's not a TV studio sized office. It's just a it's a good sized little office. Um, I actually went out and bought. A, and I, I can't see the name on it, so I'm not sure what it was. But I, there was a kit that was for sale on, on B&H, and it came with uh, two little can microphones, uh, excuse me, lights. And by can, what I mean is they're kind of like the little, they look, they're shaped like a, like a bowl almost. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Technically, a can is a long cylinder light, but same type of thing. It's, it's a little mm -hmm. scoop light. And right. um, it came with two of those, and they came with... Um, the big soft box around them, mm -hmm. and then it came with um, a case for them, and and it had a lot of, and that one actually had a green screen in it as well. So I got a, a new green screen, and and it had the uh, you can kind of see behind me if you're watching, you can see a, a stand at the end of the green screen. It came with that stand as well, and it was on sale for like 200 bucks for the entire thing, and wow. uh, the lights are pretty good. And I already had a couple lights, so now we've got uh, in this in this room here we've got four. Um, lights on stands that we use in this office here, which is which is a lot of lights for a small office. But you can get away with just those two that I bought. You can actually get away if you put them up, kind of up in front of you, and pointing down this way, and then you stand away from your green screen. You can get that those lights to actually light up the green screen and light up you without uh, much of a hassle. And uh, so that that's you know that's what I'd recommend. Go to B and H, look for some of the lighting kits. You can get them for a hundred bucks, two hundred bucks, three hundred bucks. Not overly expensive, but they'll make a big difference. Now, let's go to the ninja trips, tricks for this one. Because this you can actually have some fun with. <coughs> Sorry about that, folks. <coughs> so, uh, yeah, we're purposely doing what you're never supposed to do on the air. I love it. Yeah. So, uh, believe it or not, um, there are microphones called Lowell lights. L-O-W-E-L-L. -L. Now, Lowell has been around forever. They make very expensive lights for studios and one of their popular lights is called the omni light and what that is is it's a it's a long skinny light you know and it's got a one bulb and it's got barn doors on it and the bulb is like a so i forget what they call that particular bulb it's, it's like i don't want to say it's not a xenon bulb a xenon bulb is the giant ones you use in movie theaters but it's a small version of that it's some sort of halogen light mm -hmm. and you can purchase those um, you know, online for like $700. They're very expensive for one light. They might have gone down these days because there's a lot of other options, but they used to be very expensive. But the funny thing is, have you ever been in a hardware store or been on a construction site and you see those uh, yellow or bright orange uh, light stands with the two lights on them? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, well, you can buy those over at Home Depot for, you know, 20, 30 bucks or Walmart for 20, 30 bucks. And the one that I had had two of those. It was a construction light with a, a stand and two of those lights on it, two of those work lights. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what they use for a light bulb? Same thing, huh? The exact same light bulb as the $700 Lowell Omni lights. Oh. The exact same bulb. So you could spend $700 to go buy their Lowell Omni light with those halogen bulbs or... You could spend thirty dollars at Home Depot and get the exact same, get two of the exact same thing on one stand, and uh, you know do that as well. 
that's So that's cool. a ninja trick there. You're literally saving, you know, 650 bucks by doing this. And the great thing about this is that it's cheap. The bad thing about it is low Omni lights, because they're video lights, they have options. They've got the barn doors, okay? They've also got the ability to add one of those giant white umbrellas to it. So you kind of have to figure out a way to make that light not as harsh. Mm -hmm. In the Lowell Omni, you've got the umbrella. Now, you could, you could still go get that umbrella, that big white umbrella, photo, photography umbrella, and figure out a way to rig it onto there. It wouldn't be hard to do. It would be very easy to do that. Um, but there's other ways. There's a, a product called Tough Spun. And if you buy that, it, looks like, uh, it almost looks like dryer sheets. And it's made of a white fibery material, and you cover that over the light, and it softens the light out. So that's another thing that you can do with that. So you can still save, you know, I mean, you're saving 600 bucks or so by doing this. A very, very cheap way to be able to get some good lighting. And I actually did this, and, you know, at first I was kind of embarrassed by the fact that I was using these, these uh, ghetto-style uh, lighting kits by, by grabbing these ones from Home Depot or whatever. But then I went into a professional photography studio one day, and guess what he was using? He's got the he same had things. the same setup. So it's like, oh, I say I'm not the first one to come up with this. This is pretty good. Oh. So that's a good way to be able to very inexpensively build your own lighting kit is by going and getting some of those. Um, they work very well. The other option, of course, is LED lighting, which is still kind of expensive. It's getting a lot cheaper, but they're very expensive lights, but they're very good lights. So if you can get uh, LED ones, they work well in small environments. So if you're in a small office, you can certainly pick some of those up. But again, you're going to be spending a few hundred bucks for the LED lights and quite frankly, uh, I would rather use, you know, some of the ones that we got here. And another little trick, uh, one of the lights I have over in the corner here, which you can't see, which is also one of those scoop lights. And we've had that one for years. And what, what was used in that one was a giant incandescent bulb. It was an incandescent bulb, but it was probably about this big. And it was very harsh because it was an incandescent bulb. Well, you can actually order... You know those curly Q bulbs that you that you buy nowadays, the, mm -hmm. the fluorescent mm -hmm. ones. You yep. can buy gigantic versions of those, mm -hmm. and they're I mean, literally, it's like this big, big curly Q bulb, and you can get them for like ten bucks or so. Well, you plug, you replace, you buy one of those cheap ones that uses an incandescent bulb. You buy one of those big fluorescent bulbs, and you plug that in there, and now, boom, you've got a nice soft light. Now, the ones that I purchase are actually uh, daylight balanced for photography. So they're and they're still fairly inexpensive, but now I've turned an old lighting kit that used a big harsh bulb into using these, and it works really, really well. The only caveat being is that they break very easy. If you, you know, you barely drop you drop those in any way, they're going to break. So you definitely have to be very careful. But they're very, very good lights, and you can do really well with those. So highly recommend Absolutely. you, even if you buy just a, you know, the, the the thing about that is if you buy one of those big curly Q bulbs. If you go down to the hardware store, they have some of those, um, their lights, their work lights where they've got like a, a grip claw on one end and just a cheap metal bowl yeah, and bowl. you can screw a yeah. light bulb into it. That's what well, I, that's what I did. Yeah. yeah. And you can get one of those and screw one of those giant fluorescent mm -hmm. bulbs in there. And because those fluorescent bulbs don't really need the bowl in the back to help them out. They don't, they don't need a reflector of any kind because they put out light and it's very soft. So you could, you could literally, in fact, you could just buy, you know, they sell some of those where it's just a light socket and a, and a cord. And, a and you, could, you could buy one of those and, and rig it up yourself and, and have a very good lighting kit. So yeah. highly recommend you try some of these. It's going to save you a ton of money and your videos are going to look way better than you ever thought possible. So that's what you want to do with lighting. Now the final thing I want to talk about is your backgrounds. Now, if you're going to be shooting videos, you need to have some kind of background to shoot on, whether that's, you know, uh, against a wall, against a, a green screen, or whatever it happens to be. You got to have something that looks good. For me, I like to use the green screen because I can do it right here. I can put whatever I want behind me, and quite frankly, it's so easy these days to do green screen that uh, why not? You know, you might as well do it. Is it is it going to be perfect? No, maybe not, but it's going to be good enough. Now, if you've got a good location, if you know how to build a set. If you've, uh, if you know, if you know, if you buy photography backdrops, you can do all of those types of things and do really well. But a green screen is probably the easiest way. You can pick up a, a cloth green screen for probably ten bucks, 
Um, and you know you can buy nicer ones for 20 50 bucks but I highly recommend you pick up a green screen it's gonna be these days it's very easy to do if you don't know how to do it shoot your video and get somebody on Fiverr they'll uh, they'll gladly key out the green screen for you and take care of that and you'll have a really good video so it's gonna look very nice and so those are kind of my uh, my tips for setting up a studio without spending a fortune and I think uh, it can certainly help anybody like I said it's it's what I do, so why not? Very, very good. Yeah, I, yep. and I like those treble light things too with the, the with the uh, curlicue lights. The, those work great. Yeah, it works real. And like I said, I mean, you can you can actually get the giant curlicues at uh, I think I don't know if Home Depot has them, but I think Lowe's has them. Lowe's and they're, has. Them. They're very big. Um, they're not going to be photography balanced. They're not going to be you know. So they're they're going to be traditional fluorescents, but they're going to work well enough. And that's what I used for the longest time before I went and looked and said, oh, you can buy daylight balance photography ones and so what i do in here is i've got the giant curly q daylight bulb on on that one i've got daylight balanced um light bulbs in my two uh my two lights here with the big soft screen on it i have a daylight balanced small bulb in a small stand that you that i use to shoot as a background light or a, a backdrop light and then um in the ceiling i've got curly Q daylight mm -hmm. balanced screw in bulbs there so this entire room is daylight balanced and the reason I did that is because well right here is a giant window and no matter how much I try to close the blinds on it daylight pours in here and if you try and shoot during the day with daylight pouring in and use incandescent bulbs you're gonna get really crazy colors so I decided to turn this yeah. room into a daylight room so it's got all bulbs everything in here is daylight balanced just like the Sun so if the sun comes in, I can use that as an advantage. If the sun's not there, not a big deal either. So, that's I got I a did. question though. Sure, go for question. it. What kind of lighting do you have in the uh, in the kitchen? Uh, in the kitchen, actually, is uh, they are just the uh, the the screw in. You know, I don't know what they call them bulbs. The I'm, recessed lighting things. I'm joking because what your water heater blew up and it flooded it. What happened? Uh, in the yes, there? well. Yeah, my water heater blew up, and this is California. Now, I grew up uh -huh. in the Northeast, and people had these crazy things in the Northeast called basements. Yes. Basements. And what they are right. is uh, a giant hole in the ground where they fill mm -hmm. with cement so that you can actually have something under your house. And put and, your water heater there. And your water heater's there. And guess what? If your water heater blows up, well, it yep. pours out on the cement, and you replace it. Well, in California, they don't have basements. <laughs> So what happens is these things go into places like closets or garages or what have mm -hmm. you. Some of them even have them outdoors, believe it or not. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Wow. And ours happens to be in the garage. In the, there's a little corner of the garage that's cut out, and, and it's inside there, which happens to be right next to the kitchen. And that sucker blew and flooded the, um, you know, like we couldn't see water, but it flooded underneath in the walls and under the cabinets. And Ooh. so the... Uh, the guys had to come out and they had to, you know, replace that and tear the walls apart. So I'm not going to have a kitchen for a good uh, four or five more weeks. So oh boy, that yeah. sucks. That's a lot of fun. You know, my water heater is in the basement and it's in the laundry room. And you know what's in the middle of the laundry room? A drain. Imagine so, that. Okay. Well, you know, okay. guess what? There's a there's a j drain out in the garage right next to this thing too. But of course, uh, you know, the way wow. they set it up, it doesn't make any sense, and so it. Uh, Crazy Californians. Yeah, it's crazy. Oh, they are. They're they're nuts out here, and, and the houses are strange, and they do yeah. a lot of weird things. They they don't believe in lights here, so it's it's hard to get lighting out here because they want you to do all this energy efficient stuff, and it's like living in 1905. Yeah. <laughs> turn yeah. on turn on a light in a room, and the light's like twigs and nuts. Um, so why don't they have basements because of the desert or the right think, on bedrock? I guess or something? it's the, just the rocky ground and and okay. whatnot. I'm not really sure. Maybe it's just a cultural thing. Um, you know, in some areas it's probably because they're too the water table's too high because they're close to the ocean. But oh. uh, you know, who knows? I'm not sure why. But and, and nobody I know out here has one. I'm sure there are people with some, but nobody that I know out here has one. And so it's uh, it's a little. Strange. I've never been in a California house that had one. And uh, not that I've been in a lot of California houses, but I've you know, <laughs> been there a few times. I'm in so. I'm in a neighborhood with, where there's you know, uh, we're on the we're in the uh, up on the hills, and there's got to be a thousand houses in the hill, you know, all around the thing, and not a single one of them has a basement. So has a basement. Wow, yeah. crazy, crazy. <laughs> mindset matters, my friend. Yes, mindset matters. So 
We talked a little bit today about all these different things we can do. And, uh, well, before we do that, let's hit our little Mindset Matters bumper here. Oh, yeah. Here okay. Go. Let's do that. What is it going to do? Right. Oh. Uh-oh. Did I kill us? And now, <laughs> Mindset Matters. Well, that was weird. There was kind of a delay there for a second. I'm not sure why. Was it the MP3? I'm pretty sure. I must have saved it. Maybe yeah. I didn't. Maybe I goofed up. Oh, well. <laughs> Well, anyway, for today's Mindset Matters, once again, we're going to go to the world of podcasting because, well, I love podcasting. Podcasting is one of the, uh, one of the, the great delights of my life because I get everything on there that uh, I could possibly want. And, um, you know, a lot of people out there teaching a lot of great things. And so oh, yeah. today, what I want to tell you is about a podcast by a good friend of mine called Pat Flynn. Now, we've talked about Pat before, and when we talked about him before, we talked about his main podcast. But today, I'm going to talk about a secondary podcast that he has. His secondary podcast is called Ask Pat. And on Ask Pat, people will ask all sorts of business-related questions, internet marketing-related questions, and questions about just business in general and life in general. And he answers one every single day. And so wow. you want to check this out. Every day there's a new one. They're short podcasts, or I should say five days a week anyway. They're, they're very short podcasts, only um, you know maybe 15 minutes or so. But they're very good. They teach you a lot of stuff. And you can check it out at Ask Pat by searching it on iTunes or SoundCloud or wherever it is you get your podcast from. Search for Ask Pat. You'll be able to pull that up and uh, see what he's got going on each and every day. And learn something new, so it's a lot of fun. Very, very good. And it's yes. the radio show about video, video marketing madness with Ray the Video Guy. I'm Steve Sleeper on the Earn Dot Show Radio Network. Check us out on iTunes. Yes. And today's show made possible by Made possible by freevideoeditor.co. The easy way to get a video editor without spending a fortune on all those high-end video editors. And you can start doing all of your projects today, including things like green screening, which we talked about, and doing text and transitions and all that other fun stuff you want to do in your video projects. And you can do it all for free by heading on over to freevideoeditor.co. Leave off the last M for monkey. 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 <laughs> Who knows okay, why? Let's 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 wrap it up. All right, with, uh... let's wrap it up with our little jingle here, and we'll see you all next time, folks. He's Ray the Video Guy, yeah, Ray the Video Guy. His skill is where it's at, even if he's a little fat. He's filled with video expertise, and has so much knowledge that you need. His YouTube ninja tricks can make your marketing so sick. He's Ray the Video Guy, yeah, Ray the Video Guy.